Hey guys, I'm Miss Haridas and this is The Study Hive. Today we're going to be looking at vaccinations, so let's get started. So what are you going to learn at the end of this lesson? You're going to be able to describe how vaccinations can prevent illness in an individual and describe how vaccinations can also prevent the spread of pathogens in a population. So keywords to look out for are pathogen, immune system, antibodies and herd immunity. So let me take you into the late 1700s and meet Edward Jenner. Now Edward Jenner was an English doctor and he noticed something really interesting interesting in his time. So smallpox was a really horrible disease that was spreading and 3 in 10 people were dying and if they weren't dying they were getting these awful rashes all over their body that really scarred. But what he noticed was that milkmaids when they were milking cows um, they were actually becoming immune to smallpox and he wondered why did milkmaids become immune to smallpox and he figured out that maybe it's to do with the fact that they were contracting cowpox which was a really mild version of a disease and that contraction made them immune to smallpox. So what did he do? He unethically found his gardener's son who was a nine-year-old boy. He took the pus from the milkmaid who had cowpox, the mild version, and he injected it into the boy who innocently had no idea what was going on. And Edward Jenner hoped that maybe he could become immune to smallpox and he later found that the boy did become immune after many experiments and in 1801 he published his paper on vaccination and this is how vaccinations were born. Now there are lots of diseases that are caused by viruses and one disease in particular that I'm going to be looking at is measles. Now measles is caused by a virus that is really contagious because it's airborne which means it travels through the air and it lingers in the air for hours. So some of the symptoms that you could get from measles is a runny nose, red eyes, a cough, a fever or red blotchy rashes and this could develop into something a lot more severe. But you may have heard of measles but you might not have seen anyone really having measles and that's because at 13 months old you got the MMR vaccine. Now MMR stands for measles, mumps and rubella. So it's a vaccination that you took to prevent you from getting these diseases and you had a second vaccination with MMR probably at about three or four years so you probably don't even remember it because it was so long ago. So the big question is, what is a vaccine? Now vaccines are like injections, but they carry dead or weakened pathogens. Now pathogens is a real key word for you to remember because what it means, it's a microorganism that causes harm. Now let's break that down. Microorganism means micro, small, organism living thing so a virus is a microorganism that can cause harm because there are microorganisms like bacteria that could be good found in the gut for example so what's the science behind vaccines? Now, every pathogen has an identity. Like you have a name which is really unique to you, pathogens have identities and they come as antigens, another key word to look at. So if I show you in my diagram, these little things on the outside of the pathogens are called antigens and they come in all kinds of sizes. So they're very unique to the pathogen. Now we have white blood cells in our body and they are our worry that like to fight diseases to protect us. Now white blood cells release something called antibodies, again another key word, and these antibodies are really good and what they try to do is they try to find the correct shape of the antigen which is found on the pathogen. So what happens when they find the correct shape? Well, they start to divide by mitosis. You might remember that from your GCC spec. Mitosis means cell division. They replicate and they replicate lots of them uh, all with the same shaped antibody in preparation to be exposed to the virus again at another time. So you can see here that this white blood cell is releasing antibodies that are, have a complementary shape to this antigen found on the pathogen and any other shape will not work. 
Now, when antibodies bind to the pathogen, they can clump them together and call other white blood cells to come and help destroy them. So let's take a closer look. Now I've zoomed in and you can see one of my pathogens. Remember that's a microorganism that causes disease and it has antigens around it. And the good stuff, which is the antibodies, have bound to these antigens because they have the same specific complementary shape. And now they do this so that they can call other white blood cells to help destroy this pathogen, digest it and get rid of it so that it doesn't harm you. So what's the impact of having a vaccination? So if I take you to my graph, you can see on the x-axis you have time and on the y-axis you have the number of antibodies and you've just been vaccinated here, which means that you're antibodies you can see is starting to increase but because it's not very steep the, the speed of this increase is slow but the next time you go into this environment and you're exposed to the pathogen full-blown uh, your body is really prepared and the antibodies are produced really fast and you can see that because the line is very steep and rises to a very high number so that shows the effectiveness of having a vaccination because it prepares your bodies to have white blood cells that have the correct shaped antibodies to bind to the specific antigen found on that pathogen. So what are the positives and negatives about vaccines? So the good thing is it makes you immune from diseases. So remember, immune means it keeps you protected. It also controls diseases and in the light of smallpox, we actually completely eradicated it in 1977 because of vaccinations. The other thing is it can prevent epidemics. That means the disease can be spread in a specific area or a population, and we can prevent that through vaccination. You might know through the experience we're having currently in this pandemic of COVID-19, the word pandemic means that it's really spread on a global level because people are flying from one country to another, and that's causing the spread to happen very, very quick. The cons or the negative things is sometimes it doesn't always work and also there might be side effects. Now the side effects could be things like you might get a fever or swelling, but this is natural because remember a vaccine has a weakened or an inactive form of the pathogen inside it. So when that goes into your body, your body recognizes that there's something foreign in there. So it's naturally gonna have side effects because it thinks that something's going wrong and it's trying to help you and it's therefore you start to feel feverish possibly but that's way better than having a fatality by not getting vaccinated so this nicely brings me on to the concept of herd immunity now when I think herd I think a herd of elephants a group of something so if you look at this picture over here I have a really dense group of people so let's say this is London this is Leicester Square really populated what is herd immunity? So herd immunity is when most of the population is vaccinated and it protects the minorities of people who were not vaccinated. So I've drawn you a picture of smiley faces and all the people who are green have been vaccinated, hence why they're happy. But there's two people here that didn't quite get vaccinated, maybe because they came from a different country and the laws were different, or maybe they just missed their vaccination appointment. But herd immunity means that it's very unlikely for them to get ill because all the people around them have no way of passing the, the virus because they are immune. And that's how it protects the minorities. And that's what herd immunity is. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. And to summarize, we looked at a few key words. So a pathogen is any microorganism that can cause harm. Being immune means that you're protected. You've got antigens, which are little markers on these pathogens, uh, which give them their identity. You've got antibodies, which are good. They come from white blood cells and they bind on to those antigens on the pathogen. Um, we talked about measles smallpox and cowpox and all the vaccinations to protect ourselves from some examples of diseases which are caused by viruses and finally we looked at herd immunity when the masses of a population who get vaccinated can protect those minorities of people who don't get vaccinated from contracting the virus.
I hope you really enjoyed that lesson and I will see you in our next lesson. Bye.